So let's jump in today. Um, this, this message series is really important to me. It's called Joy to the World. Joy to the World. It's supposed to be the happiest time of the whole year. You know that? Um, Christmas time. Come on. Jingle bells. This is awesome. Hot cocoa and some cookies. It's just awesome all the time. Everything's great. You go to Target. I hear those sleigh bells ringing, ding, 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 jingling, do. Is that how it goes? I don't know. It doesn't matter because I can just hear it and I feel good, you know? That was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, I know. I know. I didn't even practice that. I didn't even practice. My vocals were warmed up, so everything's good. Um, this is supposed to be the happiest time of the year, and, and many times it is. But how come, that, how come this time of the year is when depression goes through the roof for people? Suicide jumps through the roof. I'm, I'm telling you this. Uh, it's, this is a very serious time of year. It's, it brings the, the biggest joy uh, that we experience all year because it's so heartwarming. It's so heartfelt. There's people giving like never before. I've had people reach out over and over and over again. Who can I bless? Who can I bless? Who can I bless? And I'm trying to like manage all of that. People want to be generous and people are wanting to do uh, things like that to be kind and generous. But at the same time, I'm also getting different kind of calls. I'm also getting, getting calls of, you know, this is, I, I lost my, my mother, I lost my father, I lost my brother, I lost my sister just, just today, just but to be sensitive about the details, but I, a, a letter, I got a letter from someone who's recently incarcerated and it's just, it's just heartbreaking. It's for the family. You think about this, this is Christmas time. And if your family's missing, how do you feel? Bad. That's how you feel. I, I know this. And so when, when it comes to Christmas time, it's, it's, it's easy. It would be easy for me as a pastor to just be like, you know what? Joy to the world, everybody. It's good. Jesus good. You're good. We good? We good? But it's not always good. It's not always good. But that, that is the good news. The bad news is what makes the good news so good. The bad news is what makes the good news so good. The good news wouldn't be so good if we didn't need that good news so much. You see where I'm going with this. Our stress and anxiety is at an all-time high, but Jesus is our lifeline, and he still brings joy to the world just like he did back in the scripture, like it says in Luke 2.10. It says this, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. Go, and because I bring good news that will bring great joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. That day, the angel came and said, hey, check it out. I know you're suffering. I know that, that you are under Roman rule. I know that you've been waiting for this Messiah, but I come to bring good news, Amen. joy to the world. What I'm trying to tell you through this series is he's still doing that. He's still doing that in your darkest time, in your struggle, in your trial, in your hardship, in your hang up, in, through your loss, through your financial struggle, you know, through the, through the psychological depression, anxiety you're going through. Jesus is still coming in hot to save us, to help us. Through your, through your despair, he still brings healing. Through your brokenness he, and, and in your hurting, he still brings salvation to the lost. He is still doing all the kind of good things that we need him to do that helps us, that saves us. He is still bringing joy to the world. Amen. Come on. Jesus still brings joy in the midst of your pain. That's kind of like my, my statement. That's kind of like my statement for the, for the series is like, this is how I kind of built it. He still, he did it then. And he's doing it now. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still brings joy in the midst of your pain. Mm, it's a good thing. But you, you might say to yourself, let's start with the problem. You might say to yourself, I feel stuck. I feel like I'm in a rut. I feel depressed. I mean, I can't break out. Uh, this season isn't making it any better. You know, it's, it's making it worse. And often it can. <laughs> this is an interesting thing. Proverbs 17.22 says this on the screens. It says, a cheerful heart is good medicine. But a broken spirit saps a person's strength, which is really strange to me because, it, and we all know this is kind of true, it's a weird truth, but if you're happy, you tend to get more happy. Happy people get more happy. And if you got the joy, 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 joy down in your heart, you're just going, doing good all the time. It's like perpetual. It's like, uh, I, I feel good, so I'm feeling good all the time. But if you're sad, we ended up getting more sad. What is it? And that's kind of what the scripture is saying. You know, you're, you're, it saps the strength out of your soul. The sadness saps the strength, so you get less strength, and then you're sadder, and then you just get sapped the strength even more. It's, it's really kind of scary. It's kind of, this is a big problem. And are we all, this is my question, are we all stuck where we're at? Are we all stuck? If we're joyful, you're joyful. Good. But if you're, if you're sad, you're sad. Too bad? 
No, 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 no. Let, let's talk about this. But sometimes it does feel that way. Let's be honest. When you're sad, you don't have to raise your hand. When you're sad, it feels like you're stuck in that sadness, doesn't it? It feels like there's nothing you can do to get out. And when you're joyful, you're like, I don't know. I just kind of woke up this way. It's awesome. <laughs> I, feel, I just feel kind of good. Which I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, that's usually the kind of person I am. I know you would never guess that about me. Um, I'm a pretty joyful person, but uh, that's typically how I am. I've got like, uh, I've got good things going on. I feel good about life. I talk myself into it. But to be honest with you, let me be, let me be like so honest today. I, I was even like going back and forth. Like, do I want to be this honest? I'm not sure if I do, but I have been feeling terrible lately. I don't know what it is. It's like the days are short. The sun is not up quite long enough for I need it to be up a little bit longer. It's cold. I hate the cold. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, it's so cold outside. I hate it. The weather, the short days, not enough sun. I've been feeling so tired and so unmotivated. I mean, I, I, it would be easy for me to just go, I feel good, everybody. Come on, Pastor Elliot, doing good. But it's been driving me crazy. I was actually on top of all that. I was sick last week. I know you never noticed that. Anybody who showed up last week was like, yeah, we all know. We all know because I was preaching like Barry White last week. It's, it's been a whole week. I can make fun of myself, but it was, it was pretty rough. I was like, you know, preach, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Jesus is good. And then I went in for the hug, and there was a few people that were like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Bless you. <laughs> blessings, blessings upon you from over here. Uh, but it just like my, my whole rhythm was off, and I'm a man of routine, by the way, and if one little thing is like a grain of sand going into the gears and my whole life just falls apart, I, I'm, I'm actually kind of easily messed up. You can mess me up real easy. Just call me when I should be writing. And then I'm, I'll, I'll be like, yes, uh -huh, uh -huh. and I'm like writing on the side. I'm like typing my stuff. But I was just, you have to picture me, you know, oh, happy Elliot all the time. I was not. I was absolutely not. It seemed like no matter how much coffee I drank, I could not break out of the funk that I was in until something changed. Suddenly, abruptly, and thank God, because listen to this, in Psalm 34, up on the screens for you, it says, the Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close. Here it is. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He's close to the broken. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. This is really, really good news for us. The picture is this. This is, and this is kind of how the Lord spoke to me. Um, you have to get so broken, you have to become so desperate to give it all to Christ. You have to kind of get, it has to be like, you have to be so broken, you have to be so depressed, you have to, it has to get to a certain point to where you're broken hearted and then, God's, and then God moves in to like save us. If you, you have to be so sick and tired of being sick and tired. You have to be, uh, you know, so tired of being tired, sick of being sick, all of it. You have to be willing to do something different. You have to be willing to do something different, willing to try something new, willing to, willing to go all out for God. Because let's, that, that's sort of being like kind of sad for a long time. That's like death by a thousand cuts. Have you ever heard that expression before? Death by a thousand cuts. That is life sometimes. It's like, I'm just kind of walking through life. It's not too bad but I just don't feel, mm, don't raise your hand. I just don't feel like I'm, I'm on track. I don't feel like things are going. That, my friends, is what I want to minister to today. That's what I want to speak to. That's how I want to serve you. That's what I want to uh, get you out of that because it's the really brokenhearted I don't have to preach to. They come find me. They're like, pray for me. Oh, I'm facing this hardship. And like, you know, you've, you've probably been there. When things are really, really bad, you are very, very receptive to the Holy Spirit all of a sudden, right? But when we're in that middle ground where things are okay but not great, death by a thousand cuts, and there's, there's beauty in desperation. That's what I'm trying to say. There's beauty in desperation. There is, is glory in being fed up with the status quo and just how life has been kind of holding you down lately. It's what makes great people great and what brings down people up is to get desperate enough to make a change. I know I'm looking around at some faces. I know some of you have been there and, I, and, I'm, and maybe I want to bring you there again. <laughs> Let's get you down so that you can get, go like, no, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of being in between. I want, to be, I want to be with the Lord. I want to be in tune. I want to be in. And if you're in the middle place and you're like, I'm happy with that, well, then this message really isn't for you. 
This message is for people that need the Lord to, say, to, to like save them and get them out of something. And, and maybe it's, it's a wake up call that my life has been kind of mid lately. That's right. I am young enough to say mid and it works. It works. Mid. It means middle for those of you over the age of 40. It means middle. It means like average. 50? I'm so, I'm so sorry. It's hot in here all of a sudden. <laughs> when the world is mid, you are gas. I, I'm over 40 doing this, right? Come on. Focus up, church. Let's go. It's, it's, it's ministry time. Let's get serious here. I, I, I really do. I really do pray one of two prayers for you. That, you would, that your joy would be full in the Lord, that you would just be on fire for him and, and feel like, you know what, this season, I'm so blessed, I'm so grateful that I, I am in tune. I'm, I'm in tune with the Lord, my devotional time, everything, I'm just, I'm with him, I can sense him, I can feel him. I pray that that's you, but I pray, my second prayer is that you would be so broken that you need him. I don't, I don't want you to live in the middle. I don't, because that's, that's that lukewarmness. That's that, and it's, it's not like, Oh, I'm casting, you know, I know we hear that term and it's like lukewarm. That's the, oh, that's the bad people. That's just where we find ourselves sometimes. And I'm just, I'm not quite where I used to be with the Lord. Or maybe I've never been there. And I just feel kind of like I'm just existing. My prayer is that you would become so broken, so desperate and, and, and wake up to your need to go all in for God that you would be so broken that you, would, that you would have no option but to run to him. My only point today, I only have one point for you today, and it goes like this. It's in your notes. You can write it down if you want to, jot it down, commit it to memory. It's on the screens now. When you're in a rut, you have to go all in to get all out. When you're in a rut, you have to go all in to get all out. And that paints a, a real picture, all right? Is anybody, is anybody seeing what this, like when you're in a rut, you're in a ditch, you're in this groove, you have to... You have to get out. You got to go a little crazy. You have to shake things up a bit. You have to be willing to look a little foolish. Amen? Amen. amen. It's like some of you are like, is this an amen kind of church? Sometimes. Sometimes it is. <laughs> Depends how much coffee I had that day. You have to be willing to say some things in front of people to, to get that accountability. You have to go all in to get all out. You have to go all in to get all out. So picture that rut. Picture a, a ditch. You're stuck in a ditch in your car. Think about this. You're in your car. You're stuck in a rut. You're stuck in a ditch. And you're gradually trying to change directions. And you're just like, you're in this rut. And you're just like, I'm just going to turn the wheel like this much. And then here's the, here's the, the, the ditch right here. And you're kind of in it. And you just kind of, you're angled that way. But you just stay. You're not able to get out because you're just barely like, are, are you seeing this yet? Are you seeing that picture? Like anybody with a truck. All right, everybody been in the mud before. Come on, you have to, you have to wrench that thing over and jam on that gas, and you gotta, you gotta get out, because this little like gradual thing, like think of a curb. I was gonna say something really rude. I'm not gonna say it. It had nothing to do with the difference between men and women at all, at all. So imagine a curb. Imagine a curb where there's like it's a sharp curb, and your your tires there, and you can be turned a little bit, and you're just like grinding on the edge. Because it's not turned enough. It's not enough. It's not, the push isn't hard enough. I'm talking about us. I'm talking about where you're at in life. This gradualness is killing us. This gradualness is keeping us stuck where we're at. Minor adjustments of the wheels will, won't do it. Only you have to, you have to turn hard over. I, I grew up driving a truck. I had a 4x4 four four Toyota, so old it didn't even have a, a, a model name. They, they named it out. It was R22. It was R22. You had to lift up the hoods. So like there's like two people who know that RS22, R22. I'm not a car person myself, but some of you know what I'm talking about. It's one of those old like charcoal black Toyota trucks from like 1986. Come on, somebody. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's got that little roll cage on it. Yes, absolutely. And so I went in the mud as a kid. That is how I lost that truck. Like I was so stuck in the mud one day. I was not planning on telling you this story. This is, this happened on accident just now. That I was so stuck in the mud, I kept on putting it in reverse and forward and reverse and forward that it internally shifted to neutral and re replacing the transmission would have cost more than the whole truck did. It was crazy. But I didn't know how to get out. 
I didn't know because I was in the mud and I was gradually going. And then you just, if you gradually go for too long, <laughs> somebody knows exactly what I'm talking about because it is the season to go mudding. Fa la 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 la. I'm just, I'm just in the mood to sing. I don't know what it is. I just don't know what it is. But if you wait too long when you're in a rut, you can get stuck beyond, beyond, and then you need a toe. Then you need something drastic to happen. Then you need to get rescued. You can't get yourself out. I hope to, I hope this is preaching. I hope this is helping you, that, that you can make a difference. You can make a change right now. Because if you wait too long, and if you don't do those, those hard turns, those hard changes in life, that you could end up being stuck and you could not have that traction that you need. It's all about leveraging your energy and momentum. And, and we always have God who can give us a toe when we really need it. But I wanted to paint this. You've been wondering what this is. This right here is a skateboard ramp. We happen to have one of these just laying around the church, if you can believe it. And this is what I'm thinking about. This is what I'm thinking about. This is like, this is kind of the life we end up living is, is and this happens so much. In our culture, our society, when things are so good, they're so good all the time, but, we, but we're not like on fire for it. This is exactly what it looks like. You're trying to go slow and you're just like, uh, uh. you're trying to walk. Have you ever tried to walk up a skateboard ramp slowly? Anybody? <laughs> I did not practice this. <laughs> That's what your life looks like when you're just you know, maybe I'll read a book or something. Like, oh, it's just like a little, I don't know. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll show up to church like once a month. And then maybe I'll just do this and that. And you're just kind of, you're just kind of in the middle. It's mid, it's mid. There's only one way. And, and you know what it is. There's only one way to get up this round. You, you have to go fast. You have to go for it. You have to really try. You have, to, you have to get to such a place where you're willing to rev yourself up. You're willing to like say, you know what? Things have got to change because I'm desperate. I pray that for you. I hope that for you. I want that for you is that you would get desperate enough to run up that ramp, run towards God. He's waiting for you up here in this higher place of life if you would just see your need because you're stuck right here in life and I don't want that for you. Do I want... You think I want you coming to Lifeline Church year after year after year stuck on mid? I don't want that for you. Who would ever want that? I'm like out of the light right now. Oh, man. I was so scared about that. I'm like I'm going to break my ankle in front of everybody. I don't, I don't want that for you. I don't want this midlife for you. I don't want you stuck moonwalking up there. You know, you're just like sliding down constantly. It's not good. What, what God's word says is that we need to... He's close to the brokenhearted. Remember he said that? He's close to the brokenhearted. Those who are broken, desperate, he's close to you. I pray that you would get brokenhearted. Yeah, you didn't come to church expecting to hear that. But I do. If you're stuck in your life, things are stuck on repeat, you're just stuck kind of, and you feel it. You feel it. It's, it's when you go to bed at night. It's when you wake up in the morning. It's when you're sitting at your job and every once in a while you're just like, what's going on? Where am I? What, what's, where's my life even going? Don't raise your hand. Because I know you know what that feels like. I know what it feels like. You have to go all in to get all out. And I pray that you would be willing to allow brokenness Today, I'm not praying for your blessing. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm praying for your brokenness. I'm praying that you would get broken enough to, to experience change. 2024 is almost here. And I know that this is the season when people want, want to experience change. You know, the new year, everything, new, new year, new me. It's only going to happen one way. You know, a quick resolution. No, you, you, you need to be brokenhearted on the inside. Something needs to change on the inside where you become desperate. Well, how? How, Pastor Elliot? You've, you've shown me the picture. I agree. Okay, I need to do this. I need to, I need to get broken hearted. But what can I do to get out? What can I do right here, right now? What is the thing I need to do to break out of this funk that I'm in? I'm going to end this, this year. This is one of the, 
I mean, there's only one more time I'm going to preach this year, and then Tiffany, and then uh, Pastor Aaron's going to come, and things are going to change. Things are going to, you know, I, this is one, so this is one of the last words I'm going to share with you before the year's out. And what I want to do is I want to end this year the same way that we started it. Does anybody remember the very first series? If you were here in January, do you remember the very first series we did this year? It was called Refresh. It was called Refresh. It was like the refresh icon, the one that you tap in the, uh, in the internet browser. You refresh, and then it just keeps on spinning because your connection's not good enough. I want to end this year the same way we started it with a call to, to refresh. Bloop. And there was a theme scripture. I don't know if you remember it. There was a theme scripture that I kind of want to I want to revisit to Proverbs 11.25. It's one of my life verses because it's, it's saved me time and time again when I find myself in a funk, when I find myself in a rut, when I find myself in a place where I don't feel like, what's happening in my life? I need to break out. Proverbs 11.25, one of my favorite verses. It says, the generous will prosper. And it's this next part that's really important to me. Those who refresh others will themselves be yeah. It's easy. Getting up that ramp is easy. And it's a lifestyle of outward thinking. It's a lifestyle of if I'm, if I'm depressed, if I'm down, if I'm in a rut, if I'm stuck, I can do one thing right here, right now to refresh myself, and that's refresh someone else. It's, it's so simple. <laughs> it's almost too simple. I know that. I know it seems simplistic. It seems formulaic. It's like, I just do that and it works. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. There, there's some good news for you. Maybe you don't have to get brokenhearted. Maybe if that's where you're at, you can have that. But maybe, maybe just maybe, it's because you've been trying to fix yourself this whole time. It's because you've been focused on yourself. It's because you've been trying to live your best life. It's because you've been trying to, well, I just need to focus on me. You know, I just can't see anybody right now because, you know, I'm just not, mm, I, I'm, I, need, I need me time. Come on, I need me. It's about me. I'm going to keep people at arms like, because, you know, it's just me. And I can't feel, I can't understand why I just am not feeling any better. I am focusing on me. Who told you that? Who told you to do that? I know there's boundaries. I know you need to do what you got to do. But, but the word of God is really, really clear over and over again. This is not the only place it says it. Those who refresh others themselves be refreshed. If you're in a rut, if you're feeling low, if you're needing some way to break out of this season, I have the answer. Refresh others. It is an instant boost and momentum starter that we forget about because we think I got to do something for me. I got to focus on me, but we're wrong. And I don't blame you. We all forget sometimes. We forget that that in times of, of reminding in God's word, the answer is you need to get out of yourself and bless someone else. It'll change your life. So I want to transition this into legacy a little bit because we're running out of time for the service. I hope, I hope you got a lot out of that. I hope that you're able to begin to refresh others. I hope that you're able to start seeing that it's not about what we do for ourselves, but it's how we can bless others. But I want to talk because legacy kind of has something to do with that. Like this time of the year where we're going to go, uh, where we're going to go a little bit above and beyond. Uh, this is the one day a year um, where we're, we're going to give beyond just to simply be a blessing. I mean, this is not going to, you know, any kind of bottom line or any kind of project that we, this is all going out to the community and I'm going to explain it to you in just a moment. And this is not a box that we just check either. Oh yeah, I did that real quick. It's a path that can get you out of the rut that you're in. And if you're not in a rut, it keeps you focused on others so that you can stay on that path. For some of you, giving towards an offering that is going to just only bless others seems like the last thing in the world that would help your situation. And naturally speaking, if God wasn't real, if there were no spiritual world, you'd be right. But God is real. There is a spiritual world, and so there is an impact, not only in the kingdom, but also in your own life, that that act of generosity, in fact, studies have been done, secular studies have been done, that when we're generous, it does something to our physiological state. It changes your mindset. It changes your heart. Well, I got news for you. God created all that, okay? It wasn't like, Oh, yeah, that's a good coincidence. No, he created it that way. He created us that when we're generous, when we give, when, especially during times like these, that this is what blesses us the most, and it's exactly what some of us need. 
And I'm not saying, what I'm not saying is, sometimes it's important to say what I'm not saying. (laughs) What I'm not saying is, if you share this post with three people, all your dreams will come true. This is not some like, rub the magic lamp and something good is gonna happen to you. Please don't hear that ever. Because that's ridiculous. That's, That's just stupid. But, if you are ready to do something different, if you are ready to, to jar yourself out of the situation you're in, it might be a good opportunity to do something different, to go above and beyond. That's not stupid. That's not stupid at all. Just to try something, to get desperate enough to do something different. It's exactly what some of us need, I would imagine, to get out of that rut. So this is how it's gonna go. This is a little different. This is, this is totally different than a regular way we end the service. Um, so thank you guys so much for being so kind and accommodating. We're, we're just, we're so excited that you're here. And especially, uh, I, I don't want to understate this, that if this is one of your first times here, please don't feel like we're trying to sque- put the squeeze on you or anything like that. We don't even have a numeric goal at all. It's just a participation thing that it's a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. It's going to go into this community to bless people. Um, so this is how it's going to go. Tiffany and I are going to go first. Um, I'll call you in just a second here. And we're going to go first. We're going to give first because we just believe that we, as the pastors, we need to do this first. And so we cut our offering in half. We're going to do one in first service and one in second. But we're going to go first. And we're going to pray uh, over that offering. And we're going to give that. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of set the tone. And we're going to put like extra in. This is above and beyond what we normally do. Um, and I'm going to describe these areas to you. There's going to be um, three places that you can do this. There's one little basket right there. There's one little basket right there. And there should be a basket in the back as well. And so there's going to be a song that plays. And what I would encourage you to do is with your family, just, or if you got your family, if it's just you, there, we're going to play a song. It's going to be a few minutes long. And trust me, it's plenty of time. You're, we're going to be like, wow, that was fast. But take your time. Really pray. I want you to legitimately pray as you're giving the offering. And I know most of you give online. So it's okay. You can stay right in your seats too and get on your phone and do that. I get it. I understand. But what I don't want you, it's not about coming up here. It's not about being seen doing it. What it's really about is, is you in, in the Lord praying and saying, God, please let this land on just the right people. Let these dollars impact just the right people so that it can make such a big difference. And don't, don't, don't quickly go through that. I know some of you are not used to being asked to spend minutes praying in church, but this is the house of prayer after all. Okay, so I, I want you to, to definitely legitimately pray, and, and five minutes is a lot of time, trust me. Um, but I want that because you're taking time to pray that offering that makes a, a real difference in our, our community and it makes a difference in you. Um, I, so now I'm gonna tell you where these different parts are, are gonna go. Um, the, the one is gonna, it's gonna go to local ministries here in town. Um, I've got my eyes on several, but just an example, and this is not an exhaustive list, but I've personally reached out to some ministries in town such as the Salvation Army, such as the Access Center, um, such as the 180 Teen Center, just to name a few that are wonderful faith-based ministries that are helping people, getting people off the streets, feeding people in time of need. And what we want to do as Lifelong Church, we, we want to honor them and bless them and say, you know what, you guys are doing a fantastic job. And so we, what we're doing here is being like giving brokers. And we're getting that that resource to those right areas. So some local ministries is, is going to go there. Um, another place it's going to go is we're going to do a Christmas blessing for some pastors. Um, not pastors in here. You're like, yeah, it's going to go to us. No, no, no. <laughs> There's some pastors out in the community that we know about that are church planting. They planted their own churches. They've been trying to carry that. And these financial times have really been hard for them. So what we're going to do with a portion of this is pay for their Christmas personally as pastors. So it's like, hey, you know, here's, here's 500 bucks. All your kids are getting Christmas presents on us. Whew. Because they're out there on their own and they don't get to just pass the baskets a couple times for themselves and there's only this many of them there because they're, they're, they're starting out. It would be such an honor, such a blessing, right? For us to go out and, and to be able to just come in, swoop in and say, hey, look, we're gonna take care of you. I know of at least two, and depending on how much comes in today, we might be able to bless more because I know of more than that that are planting their own churches and are strapped 
They've gone personally to try to carry things uh, in their church. But I digress. Um, a portion of this offering will be a surprise to them. So, hey, that's you. That's your giving. There's also global missions with Foursquare Missions. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world today. Um, I could have preached on the end times if I wanted to right now because of everything going on in the Middle East and everything I understand. But what you also need to understand is that you, are, you belong to a, a Foursquare church, a family that has boots on the ground in every major country in the entire world and is there. Like your church family is there. And this, this dollar, we're amongst the tops of, of like the administrative fees are so low. Um, I could go on and on about this, but I really shouldn't. Um, so the, the global, globally, your money's going globally. And finally, this leadership training. Next year, we are going to be a hub, prayerfully, if nothing stops us. We're gonna be a hub for leadership training because we have a leadership drought in our, in our country, really. And this, this lane used to be called Next Gen for us, but I'm starting to call it leadership training because I don't wanna exclude anybody who's middle-aged, come on, mid, uh, who wants to get leadership training. It's a, it's a year-long ministry program that costs $2,400 to pay the facilitators and pay the, uh, the faculty, excuse me, the faculty and the teachers, the professors. Um, wouldn't it be cool to be able to sponsor a couple students? to be able to go through that leadership training and that come from our house instead of being like, man, we need to get some good leaders in here. What if we trained up some good leaders in here? There, I know there's some people who'd be willing to go through that. So Pastor Tiffany, I've gone on long enough. Would you come on up here? Um, and uh, we're gonna give our offering first. And then in just a moment, I'm gonna release you to either come up here and, and do that. Um, but as I, uh, as I start things off, um, I just want to encourage you that, to know that these, uh, these resources, these monies, these are kingdom dollars that we know that you worked very, very hard for. Um, and our goal is not a monetary goal. It is a participation goal. So if you have a quarter in your pocket, that's, that's any, whatever it is, like whatever you can do, it's a blessing and it's going to go a long way.